Good afternoon, colleagues. Uh, this is Sabelo Kele uh, from Eswati Hospice at Home. Uh, today, I'll be the facilitator of the day for this session. So I'd like to take this opportunity to welcome each and every one of you who have just joined in. Uh, this is our info session, uh, which is a platform to capacitate each other uh, about health matters. So with an extensive uh, with an extensive platform, we can capacitate each other, we give information to each other whenever there is uh, there is, is an advice that we are we will need to share with are building each other so that we become uh, professionals for the benefit of, of, of our clients so that we can give them the quality of care. So uh, I'd like to remind each and every one of you about the rules. Uh, we remind each other to keep our phone in silent mode so that the key cannot uh, disturb. Uh, we are also lucky today that uh, we made this uh, we made this day successfully. And I would like to further again acknowledge everyone who just joined in. And I would like to encourage anybody who can who, who has something to say if the the time permits us. If there is something we want to say, we have to use our chat box here. It's available for us to use that. If you have a question, if you have a comment, if you have something inside if you want to share with the, with, 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 with the colleagues, you indicate there on our chat box. So we, we, we are happy that we, we, we do have our participants here. Uh, so that our day or so that our session here will be successful. Uh, I would like to acknowledge uh, Aiza Mini, we have just joined in. Uh, I would like to, A, to introduce yourself uh, so that the colleagues will, will we just have to hear your voice. Uh, and we'd be happy for that. And we'd like you to introduce yourself at this moment. A is a mini. Oh, afternoon, afternoon, colleagues. I'm I'm Adam Lamini. I'm at Sanu, Southern Africa Nazarene University. Uh, I'm happy to be part of this uh, session. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. A. Lamini. Uh, for joining in. Uh, it's, it's a pleasure for us as a certain hospice at home to have you. Uh, may we have uh, Mr. Gosina Tibunene, may you please uh, introduce yourself. Uh, good afternoon. Um, good evening, I'm based at the Manzini Kamen Hospital. Thank you so much, my consela. Uh, I'm wondering if you do have other other members, other colleagues there at Manzini, Manzini, Manzini Hospital, or it's just you alone? Uh, currently, I'm alone. Um, but I'm hoping they'll be joining soon. Okay. Thank, thank, thank you so much, Michael Sela. Uh, uh, also, uh, I would like to acknowledge Nana Shandu. Uh, if you can hear us, may you please kindly uh, introduce yourself. Um, good afternoon, team. It's Nana Shandu here from the in-service department at Mazini Government Hospital. I'm with uh, the SMO. 
<laughs> thank, thank you, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Shandu, uh, for joining me. We really, really appreciate that. Uh, we also have uh, maybe other colleagues introduce themselves, or you introduce them to us. Okay, uh, let, let's move on to, to, to Zotwa Kamete. If you can hear us, may you please, Marge, uh, introduce yourself. Thank you, Tim. Good afternoon. I'm Zotwa Kamete, working for a spot in this at home. Thank you. Thank you so much, Kamete. Uh, I am, I see Bongima Musa, maybe he's still on the way. Uh, is still connecting to us uh, with time, I think he will join in very soon. So with, with me here, I have hosted Tim uh, from Eswati in the hospice at home as, as, as a hub. Uh, I'd, like, I'd like them also to, to, to introduce themselves before we, 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 we move on to our, our today's session. Mm -hmm. Good afternoon, colleagues. My name is Mercy Shabamu, and I'm with Eswatini Hospital Home Team. Afternoon, everyone. Afternoon, colleagues. My name is Gomez Melani. We are hospital home. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Nungi Buzotani. I'm here at hospital home. Good afternoon, colleagues. My name is Paz Pumwani, also here at hospital home. Afternoon, everyone. I'm Sandy the Matlano. Um, most kids ago. Afternoon. My name is Penentin Lamene. Also, a team from Hospice at home. Thank you so much, colleagues. Uh, we are hoping others are still coming. Uh, we, we, we would like also to, for you to not only to, to introduce the body, but to, to indicate on the chat box uh, your name, uh, your qualification, and, and, and the facility that you are, you, you are in. So um, we will continue. We, we have uh, just introduced a, a new chapter uh, for pain management. We just introduced it uh, uh, on the last, in the last session. We were talking in the last session, we were talking about uh, pain, definition of pain. Before we manage pain, before we assess pain, we need to first understand what pain is. So we did that, we did a little bit of, uh, of, of pain definition. Last session, we, we, we move on, we talked talk about uh, the total pain concept. Uh, we talked about the three classes of pain. We talked about the challenges of chronic pain and, and, and the classification of the pain types. So we, 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 we touched uh, just a few points on that. I think colleagues uh, went on with the session on about it so that we can move all together. And then we had a case presentation from Lake in hospital uh, about a patient 60 years, 68 years old. A patient was a male with the diagnosis of esophageal cancer. Uh, well, uh, we, we, we suggested, the team suggested here that the patient do better tests to, to, to really ver verify that is it. It's really the, 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 the diagnosis that uh, the doctors found on the patient. So there was a problem that was uh, presented by, by, by the colleagues uh, from the late Whitfield Hospital, RFM. Uh, the patient, the problem there was the patient was always wanting high doses of, of, of morphine. Uh, we know that the maximum 
the maximum dosage is 60. So the patient may want more than 60 milligrams of morphine per day. And also the patient may come after two weeks. In two weeks, may come after the pill. Uh, we know that a refill takes about one from one month. Uh, we give always give one month supply as a facility. So, but this patient here would come after every after two weeks for another refill. So it was it was uh, suspected that the patient is using very high dosages dosage of very high dosage doses of 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 of, of morphine. So it becomes a problem. So it's a concern for us as, as the patient is aggressive, becomes very aggressive to the family members for wanting, for wanting those whenever the morphine is not uh, available. So the patient may become very, very aggressive. So the colleagues, uh, yes, the last session is colleagues here at RFL uh, touched something about uh, when, when there is, the concern here was the patient always co 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 complain of severe pain. That's why he may need high, very high doses of morphine. Every two weeks, the patient may come for the pain. So uh, it feels like uh, pain medication offered in, this, in the hospital is not enough. So hence the tra tracheostomy to which make the person, the person or the patient not able to talk well. So the other problem here, yeah, the patient is that uh, he is not willing to go to see, to go for a, for, 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 for a therapy. Uh, he was not willing to see a, a psychologist. So it becomes a problem. It was a concern for a facility for that patient. So uh, the case was presented by, like I said earlier on, was presented by a um, by a by a by a RFM, uh, by Sister Ntuli, 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 Ntuli. So it was on pain management. So today we will continue with our session in pain management, and it will be presented by Mr. Matawuye. And also, we do have a case presentation from, from Manzini Hospital. Uh, they are going to give us uh, the, the, the case presentation from them. And I would like to urge all the colleagues to pay attention on that so that we can, we can comment, so that we can help them, because uh, they will share this information. They will share this case with us so that we can we can we can help them in, in by all means. So, colleagues, uh, I would like to, without a waste of time, I would like to us to continue with our today's session. Uh, our presentation here will be will be conducted by our our very own Mr. Matangu. Uh, we're going to continue with 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 our 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 today's session, which is pain uh, management. Mr. Matlamo, I think you are ready, sir, to 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 take us through. Thank what you so much, Mr. Kalen. Uh, I would request that you you share the screen for today's presentation. Thank you so much, colleagues, for joining today's session. Um, we are happy that we are all learning and we are all sharing our experiences on how best we can contribute to, to the care of our patient um, who are in need of palliative care. So, um, um, uh, Sorry, we will take a few minutes of time to share um, the presentation with you. Yes, our presentation today, um, we are preparing for pain management. So um, also for now, we are looking, to, we are going to look at uh, 
uh, pain assessment, the best part of it. And then the next two coming sessions, uh, we will do um, uh, uh, the next uh, sessions. So what we are looking for is that today we will undertake the introduction of uh, pain assessment, um, the standard is pain palliative care guidelines. So we'll look at pain assessment, the comprehensive part of it, and then we'll look at why we have to look for pain assessment, and then we'll identify um, the common barriers um, that we have towards pain assessment, and then we'll discuss the guidance standards as presented by our national palliative care uh, uh, the guidelines, the 2018, and then we'll look how to assess pain. Um, uh, the last uh, uh, objective will cover it well in the next uh, two sessions. Um, so when we talk of last week, we introduced this table, which is uh, on uh, the total pain. We understand that um, each of these pain uh, may present itself differently. So what we will uh, share and make everyone understand is that um, um, okay, I see Bobby saying he cannot uh, get us. Do you all hear us, colleagues? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, I think Mr. Mabuza, you need to open the volumes of your gadget. Sorry for the interactions, uh, team. So we were saying that when we are approaching pain for our patients, we mustn't be confined on the physical pain, but we need to understand that pain comes uh, in different forms and the pain that we may see physically uh, may be um, related to other issues. So when we assess the pain, we mustn't only assess the physical one, but we need to understand that we need to do it comprehensively. That we come with this term called total pain assessment concept which is in that when you are assessing pain, you need to assess the whole total pain. Because if you leave one aspect of pain, then it means uh, you are going to miss the other one. So in this table, we have physical pain, uh, psychological pain, and then we need to deal with spiritual pain, cultural pain, and social pain, emotional pain. All these uh, 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 sources of pain, uh, or types of pain need to be addressed. And each and every time we do assessment, we need not to focus on the physical one, but also psychological, spiritual, emotional, and uh, um, cultural and social pain. So that one will help us to assess the pain. So the question then is, why do we have to, to look at pain assessment? You know, generally in the medical area, there is nothing you can do without assessment. But sometimes we are tempted to be paracetamol without evidence or without proof of the need for paracetamol. Because that's why I have said our pain, when you think we will give paracetamol. Sometimes people will present psychogenic pain and then we rush give them paracetamol. That they are issue. Uh, their drug is not uh, the physical drug, but they need the therapy. They need somebody to share their spiritual distress or emotional hurt, which is now presenting as a physical pain. So the reason that we are doing that is because pain cannot be uh, uh, objectively accessed. So you always depend on what the person is saying. And the definition of pain, uh, similar one, I say it's whatever the experiencing person say it is, and existing wherever he or she say it starts. You know, whenever that person say this pain, then there's a, a duty for the healthcare worker is to assess. So another thing that we are looking for pain is because our people are dealing and suffering from pain. So yet pain can be alleviated. And once the pain is alleviated, and then patients can be relatively be pain free. You know, there, there is no way we can say the pain is uncomfortable. There is always a way we can reduce or we can alleviate uh, pain, and we can make our people 
who are suffering from pain to be pain free, whether it's emotional, psychological, physical, or spiritual, they deserve and they can be pain free. Another thing is that uh, we need to do assessment because accurate, uh, continuous pain assessment and reassessment uh, results to uh, reduce of suffering. If we are dealing with the patient's total suffering, we need to do accurate and continuously assess and reassess pain. Um, even if the patient has not said it, you need to ask about them, how do they feel? That's when sometimes they will tell you how much they are suffering. Effective pain control uh, is central to palliative care. So once we are effective in pain control, then that one will form the pillar of uh, palliative care. And it improved initial uh, client initial relationship. You know, a patient that you have had to deal with pain will never forget you. They will remember you, you know. Sometimes even if they have died or they, they have lost their relatives, but the fact that you alleviated their emotional, spiritual, and physical all around pain, they will not forget us. It, you, you may say uh, today's people's perspective uh, towards uh, us as healthcare workers is not good because maybe we have not effectively controlled the pain. And then another thing that we need to understand why we have to do pain assessment is that routine assessment, inclusiveness is very key when we're doing an assessment. If pain assessment should always be part of the client assessment, you know, uh, if pain is the fifth vital sign. So we, we understand that um, in the end point at facilities, not all before we even do um, LM management, we take the, the core vital sign, uh, we take um, uh, blood pressure, we take part, we take temperature, respiration, and other. But we normally forget these other parameters. This indicator that it has, you know. Thus, when the people who have taken we have taken the vital signs, the temperature, they committed suicide. There are people um, who have, uh, uh, have lost the relationship with their loved ones. There are people who are dying in isolation because we have needed to do pain assessment at the time when we were doing uh, vital signs. So we are saying now pain is another vital sign, which forms the fifth vital sign and the most important one when we are doing our assessment. Whether it's an inpatient unit or it's an outpatient unit or it's a community level, whether home-based or the clinic, we need to do vital sign number five, assessing the pain. When we are saying the assessing the pain, we talk of the total pain. Another thing we need to understand is that assessment is a skill that you can learn. It's not something we are born with, but it's something that we learn and share together. So we need to learn it and how to conduct it. And that's what we are we are looking and doing together, bit by bit, as we continue with session. Um, another thing that we need to, 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 to consider um, um, what is happening? Okay. There are barriers then that we face as healthcare workers um, to deal with pain assessment. I think each one of us here has his own or has once faced certain barriers in pain assessment. But here I will share just an overview of few barriers that are there in the field. The first one is that generally, uh, you will find that as healthcare professionals, we are not prioritizing a pain assessment and relief in, uh, in patient care. We don't think of it as a priority in the patient care. Another thing is that we lack the knowledge about how to conduct pain assessment. You know? uh, we may be aware of how to look for uh, other uh, symptoms. Uh, in, a, in a person with life limiting or whatever disease, but we learn the knowledge on how then do I go about conducting a pain assessment, especially in the cultural context of our people. How do I do an assessment for a patient like Ugo or a, um, a child? 
we perceive most of the time the no or lack of time to conduct or document pain assessment or do the pain assessment. If you ask a healthcare provider, why did you do not take all the vital signs for this patient? Simply the ones that are related to MCT, BP, and large tooth cartel and other, they will say there was no time. The fact that even if you can have one patient, there will be still no time. So we need to understand that for effectiveness of care, we need to give our patient the time. We need to allocate a certain time to do assessment. Sometimes we do the assessment and then we don't document. And then we say also, I haven't documented because I didn't have time. Where would be the time that the patient are affected? Sometimes uh, we fail to use the validated pain assessment tool. There are different uh, pain uh, tools uh, or scales available in our facilities to assess pain. We have the one to assess the uh, depression. We have one to assess anxiety. We have one for suicidality. We have one to assess the severity of pain physically. But you will find that uh, it is very difficult for some healthcare to, to use those tools in assessing pain. So we need to also look around those issues. Another thing is this big monster of the of pain. You know that in our facility, we are using HMIS system, but not all facilities have them. You will find that even in the patient care files, there's nothing documented concerning pain. A, a healthcare worker will write patient reported pain, then it's done. That's not the complete con information concerning pain. You cannot just write pain, you need to complete the assessment, what was found during the assessment. And then there's also a lack of communication among the healthcare professionals, especially routine change uh, in the room. When one is changing the sheet to the other, you will find that they are not communicating very well in terms of pain. And the issue of bias in dealing with patients. You know, some people will use their own uh, experiences to judge patients. Some patients will, pre will present in a calm or pain mood. Uh, but you will find that um, uh, these patients are not okay. So even if you, you don't give them the time to sit down, you miss them. So also we sometimes fail to accept the patient's report. When the patient tells you, I have pain, we sometimes fail to accept that. And we can say, you are lying. How can you be feeling pain if you are like this? You look healthy. Uh, you look like that. So that's another issue that we need to deal with as healthcare workers. So I think this session will help us to, to deal with some of the gaps that we have as healthcare workers. And then another uh, uh, health system, I'll just go through this one. You know, another thing that has made us as healthcare workers not to restrict or to prioritize um, uh, health assessment, pain assessment and management control. Is the issue that you are not yet held accountable by the state for not uh, doing pain assessment? If there is a case, there are few, I don't know, whereby one health worker was sued for not uh, conducting a complete pain assessment. It's because we know if I've not done it in, in a whole hour, nobody will know I've done it and I won't be kept accountable. So the system is not yet been there. Uh, even if I would write the number, I found that I would not be the people of justice. Currently, we don't have cultural sensitive instruments for pain assessment in the healthcare, in the healthcare system. You know? We have these uh, universal uh, uh, tools that are available, but that has not yet been contextualized. In this era, it also pushes us as workers to go to studies on how we can contextualize all these tools so they can explain by the needs of our people culturally. So there are also like of course it's, uh, institutional sometimes that are guiding the performance and documentation of pain assessment. So you find that the, 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 the documents that are there in the facility are not favorable for pain documentation. Sometimes there's this discouraging restriction of pain medication. You know that uh, you cannot prescribe an opioid therapy. Those within some time they are limiting us uh, to do that um, from the system. Then the last one um, is the bigger um, uh, problem, whereby it's the society, the family, and the patient. You know, we have different patients with different experiences. The issue then now, the personal 
part of pain experience is an issue. Different patients presenting different experiences of pain and they interpret it differently. Another issue is the lack of awareness about the importance of speaking about pain. Uh, our, our customers, I would say so, our clients, they are not well educated on that. Why is it important to report pain? Even the living part of it, why is it important? They don't know. So we need to engage on making them aware, even when they are consulting, tell them the importance that they report their pain. Other issues in our country, we understand the issue of culture, spirituality, you know, the masculinity of a man and the traditional role of a woman. A woman must not uh, must be patient, must be strong, uh, must carry every pain. If the, if the man is admitting the woman, the woman must be strong. You know, they, they do those things. The man mustn't cry. The men must report those things, this cultural things, you know. I've also learned that even the Christian uh, uh, religion also has an impact for patients to report the pain because one Christian will say, shut the devil, don't uh, appeal the devil. If I'm feeling pain, I will speak the positive one and say, I'm not in pain, you know. It's okay, it's spirituality, but uh, also it affects pain assessment. There's also this um, uh, box that the patient can put themselves in. They don't bother the healthcare worker behavior, you know. I will not bother you. I don't want to report pain because I'm, I'm full proofing down. Nancy, what is your birthday? I don't want. Uh, so they, they hold their pain because they want to bother us. Because sometimes they feel like they are keeping us busy. Uh, there's another thing that they, they nothing helps starting, you know. Patients have tried many things and they think that nothing is helping because maybe the pain was under assessed and under managed. So they feel like, ah, I won't report it because after all, they're not going to help me. There's nothing helping. So we need to help our patients so that they can deal with the trauma. Other things that I've learned that Swaziland is one country with one language, but different interpretation. If you go to Lomaj, if they are talking about itchiness, they will say they are no easy. You go to Manzi, they will say we are Roma. They will say some of you are done. They will define they will define different types of things differently. And if you are a nurse from one region uh, with a different description, you will find a person who will tell you something else, and then you will interpret it the other way around. So we need to be very careful. Uh, the meta communication issue needs to be sorted with patient. And then sometimes our patients they will interpret pain as a um, a side of intonation, so they will feel like I'm a man, I'm not intonating, so this pain is, is a devil. I cannot be defeated by pain. Then hide to report it. And then they also hold means, even if they were given the pain, especially in opioids, um, or even uh, the issues of uh, the West medicine, like for pain control, some will not take it because they will feel like this is this one that will keep you, uh, it's a suicidal issue. So it's an issue of information after all. They are lacking the information. The awareness is not yet uh, good. So we'll be looking around those issues. How can we break them in doing pain assessment? So uh, if you go to the uh, guidelines of pain assessment in our national palliative care, when you go for page 15 and 16, it, it, it states some, some very important statements there or some very important information. We can be summarized as the following is that. Uh, the guidelines of pain assessment is that the first encounter with the patient must signal the initial assessment of pain. So this one should be carefully conducted by the, the healthcare worker and be clearly documented. Even if the patient says, I don't have any pain, you must know that if the patient says no pain, is it any physical, psychological, emotional, spiritual pain? If the patient says, so the initial encounter with the patient, especially they are referring to patients with life limiting and life threatening illnesses, the first encounter must start the initial assessment so that we can have the baseline information concerning the patient. That will help us to know how the patient will progress or to monitor the patient during the disease trajectory and during the care plan. So in documentation allow the healthcare workers, the both the first initial assessing patient and the other follow-up care or follow-up nurses 
to compare the progress in the pain management against the symptoms documented in the initial assessment. One of the challenges that we have as a, as a country is that most of our clients with life limiting and that the, the initial pain assessment is not well assessed. If not, it's not documented at all. You will find the patient with more pain, but with no clinic assessment. So we are saying, let the risk be clear. How is the patient presenting in terms of pain, physical, emotional, psychological? Was there any pain? If it was, how was it rated? Mild depression, severe physical pain, severe somatic. What pain? Can we rate it? How are we behaving? Where and say, but when we do the follow up, we are able to get that. And then another issue that we need to understand is the kind of touch and you pain. Pain changes now and then. There is no one consistent pain. Pain ever changes. Today, the pain, the, 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 the pain will change in time and frequency. So it will require also a frequent assessment, and it is necessary uh, during and after clinical intervention. Once we have done certain intervention and documented, it, it must be frequently um, reassessed now and then so that we can know if the patient is, is improving or we need to change the management. Another thing is that during the diagnostic stages of the issue of complexity of pain, you know, this is one is a complex thing. A client may experience multiple types of pains and multiple body designs. One person will say, I have pain in the back, I have pain in the pelvis, I have pain in the knee, I have pain in the toe, I have pain in the neck. They will reflect a lot of pain. Eh? Some will be uh, uh, reflect pain. So, they refer different pain. So each and every pain of that. I have emotional pain, I have spiritual pain, I have psychological pain. I will be a patient who will report different pain. So there are multiple of pain. So we cannot assess one, let's say we are done. We need to assess the holistic part. And then we need to understand that each pain must be assessed, documented, managed, and reviewed. Each pain, even if it's very sad, needs to be done that. We need to assess, um, document, manage, and be reviewed now and again. And then the assessment frequency determines uh, is that frequency of pain assessment and reassessment is determined by the patient's clinical condition. You know, so it depends on how the patient is experiencing the pain. So the frequency, some patients will need to uh, immediate uh, uh, assessment. For example, with comment opioid when a patient who will need an immediate uh, 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 the assessment of that patient so you can know how best you can. Uh, maybe the last slide, which then pushes us to how, pain, how to assess pain. These are the bigger space that we will cover in our next sessions. So today we're introducing the core basic things that need to do when we're assessing pain as it is, assessing the pain as it is. So to effectively assess pain, we know there are many tools available, think you have us to, there are many, but we have these three things that we will unpack in our next three sessions that will come. The first one will be, to assess pain, we need to get the skill and knowledge on quantitative pain assessment. The qualitative side of pain is to be well assessed. So we will look at that one, for example, we will, we will unpack the multifactorial model of pain assessment on the 5th of October. We'll be back and look at the model, how best we can look at the multifactorial model of pain to go around the qualitative side of pain, the qualitative side of pain, so we can get the quality of pain, how the pain, what the patient is saying. Um, and then we'll also get the skill and knowledge on how to do the qualitative one. Now. We said one of the challenges we have as we can is the Inability to use the available tool, unable to use the flat scale, and unable to use the flat scale or the numeric scale. We will look how best we can go around doing intensity of pain assessment. Then we will do the turn on the 19 and taking those uh, uh, scales, how best we still to use when. You know, you, you may use flat scale, you may use, you may, where did you use what? We will look at those uh, on the 19th of October in details, not forgetting what we are posting. And then also we have these clients who have a non-verbal cognitive impairment. So uh, we will look at those patients, normally sidelined, especially those with dementia, children, 
uh, people who have gone as far as um, uh, unable to talk because of the disease. Uh, equal for uh, patients sometimes who are unable to talk because of the disease. We end up not being able to assess them. Then we do assumption. We will see how best we can combine uh, the quantitative and quantitative part of it to assess them so we can manage their pain very well. I think that would be my presentation concerning the, the introduction to pain assessment. Then we will move forward to the two elements, the three elements that's about to incorporate the, 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 the guidance, how best we can do it in details now. But for now, while we are still waiting for us, may we go back to the issue of the guidance. Let's do initial assessment. All total pain initial review and do it all. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mastano. Uh, that was uh, a very informative presentation that you have just shared to, 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 the, to the team and to the colleagues. Thank you so much. Uh, it was brief, but very informative. So we, we, we have learned that I've picked uh, something that is very important here about documentation. There is a saying in, 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 the, in, in this field whereby it says documentation is, is, is the key. Anything without documentation is considered undone. So by documenting all these assessments that we are, we, we are conducting to our clients, uh, we need to document for, for an easy follow-up uh, so that the next person uh, can, can so that the next person can, can put an input, a very effective input to the client because uh, the very important thing here is our client so that the client can get the best possible care that we, we can give to them. So I would like to, 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 to give uh, this opportunity uh, to the colleagues if there is anything you would like to say, if there is anything you would like to ask, you can kindly raise your hand and uh, and, and 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 say what you, 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 you feel uh, you want to say. You can use the chat box there for 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 your comments, or you can raise your hand so that and everybody can benefit. Share your thoughts. Uh, share your comments on the chat box or simply raise your hand. Uh, I would like to give this moment to, to those who would like to, to comment or to ask, to give advices. Uh, yeah. If there is anyone who would like to give a comment, anyone would like to ask, I will give this opportunity. Uh, to the table. We have Mr. A. Mr. A said uh, there's something you want to say. Please share, share your thoughts. Eh? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Yes, thank you, Mr. Mashang, for such a presentation. Uh, I think uh, we need to uh, to emphasize on the point that uh, we, we are trying to meet the need for comfort. Uh, we want our patient to be comfortable and also to let them know that uh, pain kills. Uh, pain kills. So that's why we are going into this trouble, you know, of understanding uh, the nature of pain. It, it is that it is because it, it kills. Uh, this pain. Uh, and also, uh, one other comment that I want to make is on the issue of addiction. Addiction. Uh, where do we make a line to say, I'm not going to continue giving my patient this uh, opioid uh, because they will soon develop addiction to it. Uh, so that is uh, just the comment uh, or the food for thought for us to consider. Thank you. 
Okay, thank you, thank you, Mr. A. Um, for, 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 for your comment, it, 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 it really helps us. Uh, if anyone here, like, 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 like Mr. Damini here, would like to say something or to comment or, or give uh, thoughts. Anyone? Okay. Uh, we have, we have, we have, uh, 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 Thank you. Thank you, colleagues. Thank you, Mr. Machado, for, for a nice presentation. It, uh, it's, a, it's a comment, but not a comment, a thought, and an encouragement to, 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 to the team. And the, the, the last slide is was talking about pain assessment, and what arises in my mind is a way of encouragement to everyone that everyone to assess the pain, all, 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 all the way you are saying, assess, reassess, assess, reassess, so that at the end, as Mr. Jamini said, we want to make these people, I mean, the, 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 our clients so comfortable and pain-free. We, we, we need to give a thought on ourselves to maybe learn that sign language because we won't meet those people who are terminally ill or develop an impairment as they go down the, the ECOG stage. We will meet them maybe early in the stages whereby someone comes in and we have to, 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 to assess the pain and make the patient compatible and maybe walk free and thank you from your respective sides of the world. Thank you so much, Andy. Uh, we have we have uh, one last uh, hand from 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 Shandu. May I give this opportunity to to Shandu? Shandu, you are raising your hand. It looks like uh, Shandu was not raising, but stretching the head. So uh, we will move on to our today's case presentation uh, from Shandu. Are you there? Hello. Yes, we have. Put the put the icon hello hello to unmute. Hello. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, yes. We do, but not clearly. <laughs> oh, how are you? Shandu. Shandu, are you here? Are you there with us? Are you here with us? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, you were raising your hand. Is is there anything you would like to comment? Yes, yes. Thank you, Mr. Mashamu, for the presentation. Um, I think uh, it actually comes back to us as clinicians. We we are not uh, giving uh, doing due diligence as far as pain assessment is concerned for our clients. And um, I think Mashang, Mr. Mashang actually pointed to the fact that we, we haven't devised tools. I think we, we tend to, like even when you're actually talking about the pain assessment tool, we look at the physical pain and then forget about the other types of pain. So 
Uh, I think at a facility level, starting with all of us who are actually dealing with uh, our patients who, are, who have chronic, chronic pain, we need to actually devise tools that will address all the different components of pain so that at each business, though it will be time consuming, I think that will be another challenge. That if, at each business, we can actually assess for pain, but holistically, without just uh, looking at the physical pain so that we can improve the, 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 I mean, we can actually improve the quality of life of our clients or clients that are in our care. Thank you. Thank you so much, Shandu. Uh, it's a very important comment here. Yeah, we have to assess holistically. Uh, there is a comment there on our chat box. Uh, it says, I'll, I'll read it as it is from, from Zotu Akamete. It says, we need to be always aware that most, uh, if not at all, of our clients go to seek health services because of pain. So let us attend to their number. Uh, one issue before we do other assessments that we might see necessary to assist the client. So thank you so much. Uh, in the interest of time, uh, we will jump to our next presentation from Manzini uh, Hospital. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, is 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 Kandazi yes. Nane who is going to lead us through our case presentation today. Yes, uh, Mguni, I think you are ready to take us through. Um, yes, how are you? Yes, we can hear you. Can yes, hear you. Um, it's a good afternoon, colleagues. Um, firstly, it's, it's, it's uh, from us, it's, uh, thank you so much for, for the presentation that we just heard. Uh, I think we, we're learning uh, a lot. So um, moving to forward to today's uh, case, uh, from Manzini Government Hospital Oncology Department. Uh, we have we have a 33 year old female, which is a new case, um, perennial cancer. Uh, the staging is uh, it was, it was staged as locally advanced, considering the the, the, the CT scan and um, in, um, in 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 combination with uh, the clinical presentation of of, of the client. So our main concern with this client is that the client um, has been uh, has been seen in facility, and upon uh, discharge, um, it, it it came up that the, the client actually has got nowhere to go, uh, since the family that she was uh, staying with, the family that she has always known to be her family, uh, started rejecting her. Um, a number of uh, options were tried to, 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 to be explored, uh, but then uh, one of the options was to seek um, alternative accommodation for her in a placement home. Unfortunately, um, we, we couldn't find any, we tried, we tried most, but we, we couldn't manage to get one. The other one that we got, the, the, one of the requirements was that we should have a carer for her in which uh, case we, we, we cannot have a care for her because the family is, uh, just wants nothing to do with her. Um, also, the, uh, also active chemo was stopped for her, which actually pushed the client into a, an emotional distress, which was, um, was addressed and uh, is still being addressed. Um, as per observation, currently the, the client seems to be approaching the end of life stage. That's another concern that we have. And we still have a lot of other social issues, spiritual issues that um, are still pending. We're still trying to work on, but she's already reaching the end of life stage. Um, the chief complaint, um, we, 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 we have a problem. She, she complains of pain on the ulcer. Uh, the perennial region. 
particularly on cold and on cold days and when uh, the wound has been exposed. Also, the general condition of the client is deteriorating with decreased mobility now. Um, she's been on and off um, anemic. Uh, and also of concern is that uh, most often than not, she doesn't have um, she doesn't have blood because she relies on donations, yet she doesn't have relatives to donate for her. The blood bank usually doesn't have um, blood. So most often than not, uh, it's the relatives who donate blood for them. So with her, usually she doesn't have uh, anything, not unless there is access that they have in the lab. <laughs> Yeah, uh, let me just say access for now. Um, significant medical uh, surgical history. The client has uh, had an, a, a colostomy like since 2021 August, and she's zero positive. She's on art, no history of TB, no history of hypertension and diabetes mellitus. Uh, relevant past medication. Yes, relevant past medications. The client has been on cisplatin 5-FU, and uh, like we have mentioned earlier, it, it has since been stopped. Uh, she did uh, six cycles. Initially, it was supposed to be four cycles, then review the client, which was done. Then she, she, it was taken up to six cycles. She has completed the six cycles. And unfortunately, according to her, she felt like uh, it could have been continued until the ulcer. Um, healed. She has also been on Clexane and uh, Warfarin for DVT. She has also uh, been on Neupogen. Um, currently, she is on morphine. Um, social history and pertinent family history. Uh, work status the client is not working, but she reports that she's been working in South Africa as a domestic worker. Educational level, she went as far as grade six. Then she lost, um, she lost his fa her father, and she couldn't continue with uh, her education. Um, marital status: she's single, but she has two children. One is twelve, the other one is eight. Um, okay, worth mentioning here: the issue of smoking on lifestyle habits. The issue of smoking, it's not, it's not something that she was doing before. She only started doing it when she discovered that she had cancer. And according to her, it was a, a coping mechanism for her. But since she got back to Switzerland, she hasn't been smoking. Are we still together? Okay, thank you. Relevant health conditions and close family members. So for her, it was difficult to establish this one because client, um, uh, hasn't been staying with her parental, like at her parental home for quite some time. And also checking on the maternal side, uh, it's very tricky uh, with this one because she basically doesn't know anyone from the maternal side. So if there are any um, uh, conditions that she would be interested in, she's not sure what, what, uh, what could it be it from her maternal side. And from the father's side, she hasn't been staying with them from, for quite some time now. Um, yes, can we move on? Okay, the issue of uh, um, advanced, advanced care planning uh, regarding that uh, we, we can resuscitate um, and issue of a healthcare proxy for her, uh, it might not be feasible because she doesn't have any relative who wants to, to associate with her currently. Mental capacity assessed, yes, it was assessed cognitively, she's doing well. And yes, she is on, she, she had the mild emotional pain, which was uh, taken care of, and we still continuing with, uh, with that one. Um, comments and concerns. Our client here has, a serious, has serious social issues. Uh, which she has accepted that uh, she has no control over. If we were to start listing all the social issues, we would like take the whole day. 
uh, but we try we 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 would try to summarize as much as we as much as we can. Review of systems temperature was okay. In fact, our vital signs were all within normal range. Then the pain score for her, it's um, when she experiences the pain, she says it, it, it gets severe. So it's between six and eight. And it's not like it's always there, but once uh, she's ex she has exposed, exposed the wound or during cold days, then she experiences the pain. That's, that's, that's with regards to physical pain. And client is on morphine. She says it relieves the pain. Once she takes the morphine, she feels, she feels good. ECOG status, uh, she's, she's ECOG 3 now because most of the time she's, uh, she is in bed. And we have noted that our self-care is uh, gradually um, diminishing, but she's still trying to do wound care and um, uh, a bit of uh, this and that. Uh, otherwise, most of the time she is in bed. And symptoms, uh, pain score, according to, to this tool, she's, um, she's at three, which is severe. Dyspnea, there is not dyspnea. Anxiety is one, agitation zero. Depression, it's mild. And um, yes, she has mild fatigue as well. No vomiting, um, no anorexia, no constipation with her, uh, no dry mouth. And uh, yes, poor mobility. Mobility has like um, so much uh, like decreased. Focus investigations, uh, we have, uh, uh, we have, CBC was done and of much focus, it was uh, the HB and white blood cells. Um, so we picked uh, the one that was on an extreme low. Uh, we picked uh, the 6.3 grams per deciliter. Uh, with an reference range is supposed to be 12 to 15. So with the 6.3, she was transfused two units uh, like we had mentioned earlier, it was a SCAT donation, um, not from a direct uh, relative donation. Then at some point, the white blood cells were, at, um, were like 3.21. The reference range is 3.6 to 9.6. So Nipogen was given subcutaneously. Um, imaging, uh, we, had, we, had, we had a CT scan. Uh, which was a chest and abdominal one, which was done uh, January 17, 2022. And uh, it revealed a skin defect with infiltra infiltrations of right perineal area, most likely due to a malignant uh, infiltration. Also in the right inguinal area. Also, we not, uh, it, it peaked multiple lymph nodes noted both in inguinal areas. Um, there was no significant bony abnormality in actual skeleton. So the further plan, uh, basically the plan is just to address the, um, the, 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 the um, issues that we picked. There were a number of spiritual issues that we picked, emotional issues, social issues, um, cultural issues that we picked. So the plan is basically to address uh, 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 those issues that we picked. So amongst other things is to continue with spiritual care, we, we realized that uh, the client could be through spiritual pain because she's been kept in the facility for quite a long time. The last time, according to her, that she, she actually had a time to go fellowship was around December um, 2021. Also, she find it, she find it difficult um, doing her, um, she, she says she, usually she would uh, make time to talk to her ancestors, but she can no longer do it now because she's, she's, she's hospitalized. Then also if, uh, the plan is to continue with pain control, physical pain control, uh, symptom management. Also, um, uh, an, an, another thing was to continue uh, seeking an alternative placement home. Uh, one must say that currently all, all of the news that have been explored have, have proven like very difficult. We we hitting the dead ends. Also, there is an issue with her children because she has children. Like I said, it's twelve. The one who is twelve years and the other one who is eight years. They are both in South Africa, and they have no documents. They have no documents. Um, that side, she doesn't have documents as well. So it's difficult. 
child getting the children this side um but we are still trying to to make means to link the client with 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 the children as as per um, her request as well so through the office of the social worker and the dpm's office uh they've managed to at least locate uh, where the father is and where the children are so they are still working on that one and uh it, it is yet to be communicated to the clients that they've managed to actually locate where the children are um also we continue with supportive counseling and all this uh, with the aim of improving the quality of care of, of life for the client um basically I'll, i think that would be it otherwise if we were to get into details like deep details we would take like the whole day doing it not unless there would be like clarity specific clarity uh seeking questions that we would, uh we would love to attend to thank you Thank you so much, Goni, for for a clear presentation. As we can see, that the client here is a lot of uh, of uh, of uh, of uh, psychosocial issues and 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 medical issues as well. As you can see, that anemic uh, HP six point three. So there, there there is a lot of uh, uh, of issues. There, psychosocially, uh, physically. Uh, so, here is a patient uh, colleagues, uh, and I'm happy that uh, there are recommendations or there, there are further plans that are being placed, that, that are being put on the table uh, to help the client. So, if, 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 if there is anything that we, we would like to add uh, so that we can help this uh, patient uh for 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 this difficult journey that the patient is undergoing so if anyone here who has uh comment uh or has got something to say uh, it's a reminder that you can use the chat box uh for for our comments or we can raise our hand so that we can we can help this with this client Okay, there is a comment there on the chat box from 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 Mr. A. Uh, it says, I think it can also benefit the client to know why active chemotherapy was stopped. It could be because of the anemia, for example. Uh, that was the comment from, from, from Mr. A. Uh, anyone, colleagues, would like to share? Uh, thank you so much for that comment. Um, okay, like we had mentioned earlier, uh, the initial plan was to start with four cyclists and review if indeed uh, the client is benefiting from the active chemo. Like we had said um, that she, she had a locally advanced disease. So then they had to start with four cycles of chemo review if it is actually benefiting the client so yes she was reviewed and yes uh, to some extent uh it was agreed that she was benefiting at that uh, particular time so it was taken up to six cyclists uh which was the final final decision okay so it wasn't as per it wasn't as per um, uh, the issue of anemia it was like a clinical decision just to say, okay, we can only take it up to six cycles, like after reviewing the, the initial. And indeed it was explained to, to the client. Um, at some point we did mention that she had um, she had issues why it was it had to be stopped because she was expecting that uh, we will be continuing at the chemo until uh, the ulcer heals. Then we explained to the clients that we can only give chemo until the sixth cycle. And 
yeah, we, we've been continuing with counseling. Thank you so much for the clarity. Uh, and I think for Mr. A, thought that uh, uh, anyone colleagues, recommendations, my, comments? My question can be, um, uh, how was the person involved in the development of uh, the plan of care? Um, the goals of care include you that at what extent will the, the chemo be 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 be, be drawn? And did the plans understand um, how are the patient involved? Because maybe uh, you were executing different plans. The patient was executing her own plan and the team was also executing. How are the patient involved from the initial uh, plan? When you, she was enrolled to, to the chemo, what was the purpose? Did the patient understood the goal of chemo to her and the, 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 the conditions that may lead to its termination? Uh, with this one, it might be a very tricky one because when the client came here, she had already started, she was already being attended to by another facility. So the information that was communicated um, in terms of uh, the, intent, uh, the intent of the treatment was based on the CT scan results. But then when, we, when she got here, we had to consider also the clinical presentation where the issue of uh, the condition being locally advanced uh, cancer was actually communicated. So I don't know uh, why did it had to stick to her that she has always been a stage two and uh, as such, she expects to get better. Otherwise, when she got in here, it was explained that yes, uh, according to the CT scan that was done initially, she was stage two, but clinically, it is a locally advanced. Um, it is a local. It is a at a locally advanced stage. Hence, uh, where, that's where the issue of hair studying with four cyclists came about. So she was involved. Maybe she was hoping that um, as, as we continue. Okay, uh, uh, my God, I answered. Yes, thank you so much for, for, for a very good response. Uh, I see a hand from Tan. Thank you. Thank you. I have a question pertaining the client bringing back her children from South Africa. I have a question pertaining the clients uh, retrieving her children from South Africa that have there been any discussions or any deeper plans being made by the clients that should the children safely return to Swaziland, what is her plan about them? As she has stated that she has no, almost to no relatives who are able to assist her and with her condition being in a deteriorating state, what is her plan? And also maybe with the engagement with the DPM's office, how far is the DPM's office going to help her? Are they going to maybe take the children to a children's home when they arrive the site? So my question in a way is what is what what are the plans when the children arrive the site? How would she take care of them? Afternoon team. Um, in response to your question about the children coming this side, we still haven't alerted the, our clients that we have managed to trace the children. We still have to have a discussion with our patient and have her own opinion on how she feels about the children being this side or that side in South Africa. We are still waiting for a formal discussion from the PM, a go ahead from them. 
Thank you. Okay, thank you so much. Um, uh, I don't see any hand. I, I don't see anything from our chat box. Uh, we are going to, to move on with our session, uh, with our recommendation. Mr. McDonald. Thank you so much, um, Manzini Clinic, uh, Manzini Government Hospital. Um, so far, you are doing a great job there. I think we are all learning what you are doing. Um, I think uh, and I hope um, such a client has been linked to the home base unit. Uh, I don't know if Manzin Hospital is able now to, to conduct a um, uh, home visit, but um, for such a client, I understand the baby is no longer now staying in the, um, at the hospital, I'm right? Hello, Nana. Sorry, we can He's no longer in the hospital. She is still in the hospital. Like for the past four months, she's still with us. Oh, okay. okay. I, I just want to say that uh, with that, um, I understand that the patient you know, to, to do traditional spirituality uh, was connected to ancestors. I think that alone, because the patient was here the whole for the Western medicines, that they will deal with the cancer. Now that the chemo is withdrawn, is now left with nothing to, to hang on. I think the issue of uh, spirituality needs to be accessed in depth so that we can, let's have the uh, care workers work on it. Because if now all the pillars that will hold on are moved out, is now left into one that can be eternal for, for him. It's either love, connection with loved ones or his God or ancestors. So I think if there is a belief of traditional uh, uh, spirituality, I think uh, the facility through the social workers has to look around the issue of the practices that she used to do that are spiritually that could build his or her home. So I think we need to work around that issue because medically um, there's little now we can do it. So let's work around them, the other pillars that are left uh, for her to hold on. So I will recommend or, or that you work on the spirituality part, dealing with the, how we can build the hope of the patient. Even if then he feels that we need a Christian, um, if he need a certain part that organized with what he actually understand. Even the traditional ones, if it's available to take any traditional healer, organize the one for you. The incantations, whatever she feels can bring back the, um, the hope for her to still survive is okay. And then the issue of uh, Mopi. I uh, saw so Mopi was running alone there without any laxity, but I hope uh, it was a issue of space. Otherwise, um, the issue of constipation needs to be also assessed so that if she doesn't end up there, if laxatives were not there, but if they were there, I think they, they didn't um, hold up um, in, in that uh, uh, area. Uh, I think that the issue of um, anemia, I don't know, Dr. Lamine, this is there. Uh, that um, uh, what medically can be given because I doubt that the hospital can have all the, uh, the means that can be needed by such a patient. But then maybe the issue of supplements, um, those um, uh, fellas and um, only can also assist in dealing with the anemia because really the, the, the cancer will continue to the patient is also to continue to give the patient such because then the issue of the children. I don't know what will be done, but I think what we are doing is okay because another thing is to assess uh, if the patient really needs to be in contact with the patient that the, 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 the pace at which that is done is a little bit slower and quicker because 
with the psychological stress and stuff uh, the families to be done as quick as possible so the children can get closer to anything happens uh, and then the issue of uh, being confined in the hospital. We know that life in hospital is like you go outside, you pass the sun, you come back. I don't know what social can be done for such a patient to keep him distracted from all other things that the patient may be going through. You know, finding a new home, finding new sisters and relatives from the, the team. I don't know what can be done, but I think with the plan of the patient uh, being discussed, also the plan. Uh, will work. I don't know the issue of resources, how far the facility will go, but thank you so much for having such a patient. I would just emphasize on the issue of let's find the spirituality side of the patient because medically now uh, we, we, we are unable to, to give um, an accurate treatment. And then the issue of uh, symptom management. If the morphine is given, before then the patient will post constipation, just could not access and have laxatives in place. Maybe for today, that would be my, 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 my contribution to, to it. Thank you. Um, thank you so much. There's a comment there. There is a comment there uh, from, from Marika Nelson. Uh, I will read this, I will read it as it is. Okay. The comment says you have done a great job, Manzini Hospital team. This, this is a challenging case. All you have done is commendable. Sorry about that, team. Okay, uh, all you have done is commendable team. Pray that uh, you will have a breakthrough in your plans for her and her children to achieve comfort. Okay, that 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 was that was the the, the, the message uh, to to the Manzino Hospital team, uh, and an appreciation for doing a great job to our 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 client. Then for uh, okay. This is, I think, is the response from our recommendation uh, from, from Manzino Hospital. It says patient not constipated and already on iron supplements. On issues of spirituality, a pasta has already been sourced, but as far as, okay, but as far uh, as far uh, and century we guided by policies and cannot explore further. Uh, I think that was a response from, from, from the recommendation. So uh, we do have uh, uh, the feedback uh, link there that is on our chat box. Uh, this, uh, this link is for us mm -hmm. as the hub for, uh, for for improving, it help, helps us in improving this, uh, the quality of this program. So if, if there's anything that you need to, 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 to write or to comment, there is this link here that is on our chat box. Please uh, go to that link and, 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 and there you will find the feedback form. You can fill in so that you can, you can, you can, you can share it with us so to improve this. This, this program uh, in the near future. Our next, uh, our next session will be on the 5th of October, uh, 2022, uh, and we'll continue with our session there on the 5th of October. So thank you so much colleagues for your input. Thank you so much for your turnaround and we appreciate it. Uh, please come back next time on the 5th and please invite more participants to join in because this is the platform uh, that will help us improve our services to our clients. Thank you so much, Tim. Till next time. Uh,
bye 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 manjini ini beluan bye thank you thank you